Hello, this is called My Last Mental Getaway. I could tell by the way it started that this was a good dream, not a nightmare at all, a dream. He rested the oar on the side of the gondola. You can stay here forever, he whispers. This is a coded reference to one of my oldest dreams. I call it the Hopes of Reality series. And takes me somewhere, wrapping me up in sheets of love. I open my heart and mind to the possibility. I can't stay, I say. Can't? Why? Dreams, fantasies, aspirations? This isn't real. I have to wake up. I like to wake up. He exhaled. Waking up is the worst part, unless it's a nightmare. Is this a nightmare to you? His inquiry, his inquiry appeared sincere. I've broken the heart of my gondolier. And history has proven that this can only go one of three ways. There's the enjoy the moment option, the argument over reality option, and the non-specific option. Faster, I suggested, leaning back, absorbing the vitamin D. His strong upper body glistens with sweat in the sun, forcing me to envision Fabio wooing every woman on the boat once aboard. So, Niccolo, let's. I check my bag and the shore to seek out a place to stop for lunch and then look back at him. Stop and have lunch? He looks around for a place to dock impatiently. Stop now, back on the water by three, I persist. He receives direction in silence. I roll over instinctively into the darkness. I've toyed with the thought of death my entire life. About every 50 dreams turns into a nightmare. I suffer frequently, but dismissively. Distinguished by two events, first seen in childhood around my old family home. First, the presence of an old woman. She's hideously ugly and always frowning. Mostly she cries and shakes me in my sleep. Second, falling. I fall and fall until I awake tired and frightened. There is no known cause or cure. Dreams take me there every once in a while since childhood. It is what it is, I think, once awake, but it is the worst. My dream evolved, dropping me into a world all too familiar, falling. What was familiar feels foreign in the darkness. I wish for a light to shine on my five senses into the nightmare where I was surely doomed to disintegrate and cease to exist. I wish I had better prepared myself to wake up. These are my two wishes. I struggle to decide where the dream ends and the nightmare begins. I can recall falling asleep while I was thinking about tomorrow. It was an ungodly Saturday morning after a late night raid. I hear drunk people in the street screaming with exasperation. I would stumble off, I'm never sure where, losing my way as surroundings change. It's frustrating to recall a nightmare. My dress, my Friday night dress, I felt flawless when I was done dressing. I sit in the memory of the moment waiting for a hint or a clue, viewing the moments in my mind, offering no suggestions. Sliding like the sand on a dune, it came to me. In a nightmare, surroundings don't matter. So there I was falling, all the horror of the moment resumed, darkness reinventing itself. It always takes so long to fall, caught up in the cold air, then it stops. The sudden stop, the end. It's over? Is this really it? I wake fearful for my sanity, breathless. I remember in the nightmare feeling defeated, living in a beautiful castle with no doors and no windows. <coughs> the first floor flooded with fish-filled water. The second, just me, alone. The third, voices, but nobody's. I named the voices. Charles spoke the most. Charles sat above my bedroom, barking orders at everyone else, in charge of all of his upstairs subjects. Charles is a boss. I admired him. Can you all keep it down? He never answered my calls, and carried on despite my attempts to calm the rioting. Kitten the dog would lay in my lap, barking at Charles. Charles would bark back. We sat. Darkness spread rapidly. Kitten tore feathers from a hole in my pillow. Feathers, cotton thread, thread, cotton feathers. Kitten barks and growls viciously at the pillow, yelps and growls and drastic wild sentiments. Sometimes I feel I can comprehend the noises. Give it to me, or why thank you. But it was Charles upstairs that I can hear clearly, incessantly. The nightmare feels longer. I'm on my 25th hour. Charles grows louder and closer. I imagine how he looks in person. He sounds handsome. Kitten barks at him. Kitten and I are always drawn to the same noises. Kitten stares frantically, and I look back in agreement. Is that Charles? I inquire. Sounds like high heel shoes. Kitten responds with a bark. Yes, yes, it must be a woman coming downstairs. Heels click on the steps one by one. I wait for them to stop, but the stairs increase in number. The house was once lively, but now overrun with the absence of life. Since I've arrived, it's become scarier. The stairs keep growing, each one now echoing the sounds of the heels. Chanel. They go faint. I hear a voice. The glass of my mirror shatters. Kitten shakes. Staring into my face, tail between his hind legs, tongue hanging out, I jerk myself to wait. 
The kitten stares at me. Look away, I sneer. Look away. His bark turns into a growl and he runs out into the hallway.